So it's kind of a cliche that it's hard to train your legs properly with just bodyweight exercises, with just calisthenics. There's plenty you can do for your upper body, whether it's push-ups or dips or pull-ups, and there's loads of ways to make it more challenging by changing the lever arm or by switching onto one side. But training your legs is more difficult because of course you're carrying your weight on your legs all day every day. So how do you effectively increase that challenge enough to stimulate growth? And ultimately for many athletes, the answer comes down to, well, basically squats. And while squats are great, you can't build a whole workout off of just one exercise. More to the point, squats aren't great for everyone because squats are quite challenging. If you have any issues with your hip mobility or your ankle mobility, then you're gonna find that squats are a little bit uncomfortable. Those with longer legs can find them a bit ungainly. Depending on your hip socket, you might find it more or less difficult. Then there are issues like how far down do you go and is butt wink really an issue etc etc so if you're relatively new or if you want to do high repetitions and you just don't find them that comfortable then squats might not be the perfect option for you fortunately as ever there's another fantastic alternative that's right under our noses and it is of course the lunge and i'm going to explain to you why lunging is particularly fantastic as an addition to squats or as an alternative and we're going to look at some of the different variations you can do as well so Without any further ado, let's dive in, or lunge in. So most people know how to lunge, I think. That's one of the great things about it. Unlike the squat, it's pretty hard to get it wrong. But let's go over the basics and look at some pointers just in case. So all you're essentially gonna do is start from a standing position with your legs together. Then you're gonna step forwards, you want to land so that your feet are about shoulder width apart. There's no need for them to be in line. That just makes it much more difficult, reduces stability. Step forwards you know, further if you can. And you want to land on your heel. Keep your weight on your heel. And then you're going to push up back through the heel as you come back up. Try not to do this too quickly so that it's a bounce or you won't really be working the muscles. It'll be more of a kind of tendon thing. And it's not the end of the world if your knee does hit the floor at the back, but it's also not ideal because then you're taking some of the weight off you're making it slightly easier for yourself and thereby reducing the effectiveness of the exercise but it won't do you any harm some coaches will tell you not to let the knee pass the toe on the front leg but as anyone who watches this channel or similar channels will know that's actually relatively outmoded advice at this point and we know that the knee passing the toes can actually be a great way to strengthen it as long as you don't have existing issues and you've done that groundwork in fact this is quite a nice gentle way so if you want to lean forwards a little bit but that's a variation that we'll get into in a bit so now to the good stuff. What is it about the lunge that makes it such a fantastic exercise? Well, there's actually a whole bunch of different things. So first of all, the lunge is in some ways a single-legged move. It's a unilateral move, except for unlike something like a pistol squat, which is a challenging and more advanced movement, you are using your back leg to stabilize and balance, which means that this is something that someone who's slightly more of a beginner can do, and it's something you can do with added weight, and it's something you can do you know, in higher repetitions, but at the same time, you get many of the same benefits that you would do from a completely single-legged exercise. So those benefits, of course, are first of all, balance and stability. If you want to strengthen your hips and your ankles and your stabilizing muscles to make it less likely that you're gonna twist an ankle or put your knee out when you're running, especially on uneven terrain or when changing directions quickly in sports, then the lunge can help you do that. And in fact, as you start to fatigue, you'll notice that keeping your legs straight is one of the slightly more challenging aspects of the movement. You might even be able to generate more strength this way thanks to something called the bilateral deficit. So the bilateral deficit basically means that if you try and exert strength from two limbs at the same time, you won't be able to generate twice the strength that you would be able to generate from one limb at a time. So in other words, if you did a leg press with both legs and you could press, let's say, 150 kilograms, then you would probably be able to press more than 75 kilograms with a single leg. And there's obviously many different factors such as stability, but all things being equal, this is the case. And basically what this means is that if you're training individually on each side, then you can generate more power than you otherwise would be able to. And at the same time, this is great for symmetry. If you have an imbalance so that one leg is stronger or one leg is bigger than the other, which is very common, certainly true in my own case, and I've had a scan to demonstrate this, then moving to a unilateral movement or a quasi unilateral movement like this one is a great solution to that. Because when you do the squat, if one leg starts to get tired, then the other one can start to compensate and help. And this can lead to compounding issues over time. So making sure that you're training at least some unilateral movements can prevent that from happening. And if you imagine running a huge distance, having a little bit less strength in one leg is gonna be a massive 
detriment to you over a long duration because whilst you might generate a tiny little bit less power on each stride, that's gonna add up over time and equal a big difference to your overall time. One of the most popular benefits of the lunge though is that it's fantastic for activating the glutes and this is something that a lot of people have trouble with, largely thanks to our sedentary lifestyles where we spend so much time just sitting on them, squashing them. So if you're someone who has trouble activating glutes during a squat, which goes for a lot of people, then using the lunge in conjunction with the squat or as an alternative is a fantastic way to go. Another big benefit of the lunge is that it's a kind of weighted stretch because as you dive down into that movement, as you lunge down into that movement, you're going to be stretching that back leg nicely. So it's a brilliant way to stretch the hip flexors. And this is another very common issue that we have thanks to our modern lifestyle sitting at computers. We have tight and short hip flexors. So really this is the perfect antidote to our modern lifestyles. And it's a brilliant way to build more athletic performance, whether that's jumping, running speed, or even high kicks and scissor splits. At the end of the day, we mostly perform from a single leg, whether that's in sports or in life, and so it makes sense to train on a single leg. And actually, the lunge in itself is a movement that we do use from time to time, for instance, when lunging for a ball or trying to catch something that falls out of a cupboard. So it's a really functional movement and one that a lot of us could benefit from practicing. But as with so many exercises, the real benefits of the lunge come into play once you begin experimenting with variations and progressions and when you start combining them with different movements. So let's start with an easier variation. If you're someone who struggles to perform a lunge because this does require some stability and some strength, then you can instead use the kneeling get up. So what you're gonna do instead is get down onto one knee, stand up, get down onto the opposite knee. And if you need added support, then of course you can hold onto a wall or the side or a friend's hand in order to stabilize yourself. Another obvious variation for the lunge is to add weight. And you can do this either by loading your back with a weight as you would do in a squat, or you can do it by loading your front with a weight like a goblet squat, or you can hold the weights on either side like you might do with a trap bar deadlift. And this is one of the big advantages of the lunge again because you can add that weight without the spinal compression. So if you want to avoid that, then the lunge is your boy. It also means that you can get varied benefits depending on where you're holding the weight. If you hold the weights on either side, then this means you're gonna to have to use more hip stability and balance once again, and it's great for improving your gait, etc. In fact, you could go one step further and load just one side, like you're doing a briefcase carry, hold just a weight in one side and then lunge, and now what you're doing is you're having to resist that lateral flexion and thereby you're training your core at the same time and this is once again a great way to build more stability as well as to build strength for lots of everyday tasks like carrying shopping or carrying a young child. At the same time you can also use an overhead position, hold the weight overhead and of course you can do this with a squat as well but it's actually much easier with a lunge and so it's a great way to build up to that as well. So there's plenty of options if you want to add weight to the movement. One of my very favorite lunges though, because everyone's got to have a favorite lunge, is the walking lunge. So all you're gonna do here is you're gonna lunge, but then instead of stepping back to the starting position, you're instead going to step through into another step and then just keep going. And the reason this is so great is that it maintains a constant tension, especially if you perform it correctly with a constant motion, you're at no point gonna be resting at the top of the movement. This will help to build up blood and metabolites in the lower body. And at the same time, it will build that strength endurance, which I've talked about so often, Having a big max lift is really cool. It's a great bragging right, but it's not as useful in the real world as being able to be strong for a continued amount of time. We very rarely need to lift something really heavy once. We more often have to lift something quite heavy lots of times. I said this loads, so the walking lunge is fantastic for that. Especially if you're going through varied different terrain, in which case you're building even more stability, especially if you're wearing barefoot shoes or minimal shoes. And if you think it's too easy, then try covering any significant distance and then come back to me. You can combine a walking lunge with a weighted lunge, whether you want to make it a farmer's walking lunge or whether you want to make it an overhead walking lunge. You can do all kinds of things like that. And of course, you can also lunge walk backwards. And this is a fantastic way to lunge walk if you have limited space. You can lunge walk forwards and then you can lunge walk backwards and then repeat. And this slightly changes the activation. It also builds even more stability as this is a more difficult movement. So if the walking lunge is my favorite lunge, 
which it is. Then my second favourite lunge would have to be the scissor jump or the jumping lunge. And basically what you're going to do here is you're going to get down into the lunge, the lower lunge position on the spot, jump up in the air and then switch your legs over before landing. And then you're just going to jump straight back up again. Try and jump as high as you can, make a real conscious effort to have that neural drive to want to jump high and explosively. And this is really fantastic because what you're actually doing here is you're building explosiveness, plyometric power off of that single leg in the same position or a similar position that you might use when decelerating, running or jumping. Not exactly the same, but there's a lot of crossover here. In fact, the awesome YouTuber Pygmy, who seems to have been around forever sharing tricking tutorials, calisthenics tutorials, as well as general fitness advice, says that the scissor jump is one of the single moves that gave him the most gains in terms of his jump height and his running speed. And looking at his performance, that's enough of a testimonial for me. And it's also something that I know that Grant uses a lot. So, and again, what you can do is you can do as many of these as you can, and then you can switch immediately to regular lunges if you want to tax all of your different energy systems and build a lot of strength and endurance at the same time. And my third favorite lunge, because apparently we're doing this, that would have to be the back lunge with knee thrust. So what you're gonna do here is step backwards into the lunge, then step forwards and thrust your knee up in the air, and then you're gonna step back onto that same leg. So you're gonna repeat all your repetitions on one side and then the other side. And this is great because you're once again generating more power and force. It's a very functional movement. Obviously, if you want to develop knee strength or kicking strength or train those hip flexors to bring the legs up nice and quickly from that stretched elongated position. There's also another fantastic form of resistance cardio that gets the heart rate going. And yeah, it's just a brilliant all round move. And you can even add a little jump in there as well. So you're jumping up in the air if you wanna make it more difficult still. And the Bulgarian split squat, which is also sometimes known as the Bulgarian lunge, is yet another really fantastic movement. And what this one does, according to the glute guy, who's really the expert on glute strength, is it allows you to challenge the glutes more at the top of the movement, at the higher range of motion. And this is important because normally when you're lunging, all the challenges down the bottom of the movement, it has a very distinct, steep strength curve. What this means is that you're not training it at that more stretched position. And actually this is where the glutes are capable of generating the most force. So really you're really missing out. By putting your leg up onto something higher up behind you, when you perform the Bulgarian split squat, you're essentially fixing this problem. You can do it with weight or without weight. And if we're talking about guys who like leg training, then of course there's knees over toes guy who talks about his ATG split squat, where you lean nice and forwards. It's great for building ankle mobility, knee strength, of course, that's the whole point, and also even more hip flexor mobility. And this is a fantastic movement. I'm not gonna cover it here because it really deserves its own video. And also you should check it out from the source. Knees over toes guy has loads of useful free tutorials, but yeah, that's another movement that's really something of a hybrid between a squat and a lunge. And of course you can combine all sorts of different movements whether you're lunging and doing an overhead press or combining these different movements. There's lateral lunges if you wanna train in the frontal plane, although this is quite a different move. Once again, it's somewhat similar to a squat. There's endless variations and all of them have something unique and cool to offer. So if you're currently training legs with only body weight and you're looking for something other than the squat to perform, then consider lunges because they're really a fantastic movement. They have tons of variations and yeah, they have loads of benefits that even the squat can't offer. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting guys. If you did then please leave a like and share it around. That would help me out immensely. If you want to see more like this then subscribe and hit the bell button if you want to be notified of each new upload. Let me know in the comments down below whether you use lunges and whether you intend to after this video. Also any additional variations you have I'd really like to hear them. If you like this kind of training that focuses on not only strength but also mobility, endurance and even things like agility, balance, focus, creativity and IQ, then you'll really enjoy my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training. There's a discount on right now, as there has been since the beginning of the pandemic, and there's a link in the description down below if you'd like to check that out. If you just want an introduction to functional training and what it means for the average Joe as well as athletes, then check out my print book, Functional Training and Beyond, which you can get from Amazon and a host of other good bookstores. Either way, thank you so much for watching this one, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Cheesy walk away. Got my camera.